Hi everybody, Trenton Bennett here, and today I want to talk about a workflow that I had to set up in order to do a bundle set for ACX. So if you've done multiple audiobooks and the time comes to do a bundle of those, it's a little bit tricky. It's more difficult if you actually have to make any changes to the original files, which is what I had to do. So I'm going to talk to you about the basics first, which apply to all of the bundles, and then I'm going to show you that a, a workflow that I came up with that I think was really helpful, and I hope it helps you too. So this is the Star Child trilogy. Robert Willis Croft and I worked on all three of these audiobooks. Whenever you upload an audiobook bundle to ACX, they have a specific way that they want the content to flow into their uploads. So for example, you're going to upload the opening credits for the actual bundle itself. These are the opening credits that have to do with the trilogy. The Star Child Trilogy, written by Robert G. Williscroft. And that's specific to this bundle. Right after that, the first file you upload is the opening credits for the first volume. And this is the original production credits that you did when you first did the first audiobook. Slingshot. Building the first space launch loop, the largest machine in human history. So you get the idea. After I op upload the opening credits for the series and the opening credits for the book, then I do the whole first audiobook set of content, then I do the closing credits for this audiobook. Let's scoot down and take a look just to give you some idea. Here's all the chapters, and we get to the end. And there's our closing credits for the book, the first book, and the opening credits for the second book, and so on, all the way out to the end. And if you scoot to the very bottom, your closing credits that you officially upload are the closing credits for the box set, the, the bundle. So, all right, that takes care of the basics of the files that you need to upload to ACX. Now, how do I set myself up with a system that makes it easy for me to keep track of all of these different audiobooks since I have to go back and touch on them? Let's go through that for just a moment. In this trilogy, all three volumes jump around a whole lot in time and space, and when we got to the third book, the author started adding in these neat little section headers, like Cassini 2 in the Asteroid Belt. It's really useful to have that because you know where you are when the scene changes. And in order to add these back in, it means I need to go through every one of my chapters. And at the appropriate breakpoints, I need to insert that little bit that I recorded. So I came up with a way to make that really easy, where I record it all at once, I make a note of it all at once, and then one by one I go through and slip it in where it needs to go. It's a lot easier than having to just walk through the entire manuscript. The first thing I did was I went to my original manuscript and I went to the table of contents for each of these books. And I copied and pasted the elements from the table of contents for each of the books into a spreadsheet. Now I don't have to read image one, I just have to read the locations. Equatorial Pacific, southeast of Baker Island. So I copied all of those into a spreadsheet that looks like this. This shows me that in Chapter 7, I have these three different locations that I need to put in. And as I went through in the manuscript, I said, here's the page in the manuscript that they are. And then I went and found them in the chapter and dropped them in where they needed to go. I'm going to show you how I did the recordings of all of these pieces but first I want to show you exactly how this particular part of it is set up. So here's my manuscript. Let's scoot down to where I actually am right now in my production to give you a live example. So I'm getting ready to do chapter 28. And I know that the first thing in chapter 28 is Iapetus, headquarters. Well, the first thing I did was I made a header file. It's my name for it. I went through and I recorded all of these things, me saying them with a little bit of a gap between them. So there's a recording of me saying, Merkava, Earth, Merkava, Iapetus, and so on, all the way down the line. And that made this so easy, because look at this. Iapetus, Headquarters, Earth, Mission Control, Iapetus, headquarters. What this lets me do is I can take each of these headers and I can just cut it out 
and paste it. Now why do I cut? Because every time I cut it, it's going to slip all of these forward and leave only the ones that I have left to do. I don't have to dig through every one of these and go, okay, which one am I on now? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? I'm going to show you how that works. It's a lot easier because once I keep cutting, when I get to the end of the file, I'll have nothing left to do. So let's do this one for chapter 28. Okay, chapter 28, Iapetus, Headquarters. Where is that in the manuscript? Let's go back to the manuscript. And I know it's not in Slingshot, so let's go into the Star Child Compact. And let's scroll down and look for chapter 28. Hope I don't make anybody seasick. Sit tight here. All right. There's the other fun thing. I had chapter 26, an interlude, chapter 27, and another interlude. Here's chapter 28. So, Iapetus Headquarters. I click on that. I'm now navigated right to where I need to be in the manuscript. And if I give it just a few seconds here, it's going to take a minute to catch up, but then I see, okay, this is page 557. Whew, 1,000 pages. So I say, okay, this is on page 557 of the manuscript. And it just so happens that the very first one in every chapter is right there at the beginning of the chapter. Isn't that handy? So I need to go into my header file and find me saying Iapetus Headquarters. Let's go ahead and open up chapter 28. Let's close this. Okay, so how did I do this? I organized all of my files ahead of time. I knew that I needed to make a separate space just for the trilogy. And I knew I needed to get my source files for my three audiobooks. But I also knew that each of these has names like Chapter 1. So if I have multiple Chapter 1s in one folder, I'm going to get confused. So I open my Chapter 1 in my original. And when I'm done with it, I save it into this folder called Final. And I give each of them a name that's going to help me know at a glance which one is which. Let's take a moment and talk about that. I have three books. I decided it would be easy for me to treat them as volumes. So Volume 1 is the first book. So I gave it a name V1 Chapter 2. And all the way down until I get to the second book. So here's V1 Chapter 33, and I made a note to myself. That's the afterword. That's really my closing credits. There's my opening credits for Star Child, and the forward, and so on. So every time I get done with my work and I'm ready to output it to an MP3 that's going to go to ACX, I give it a name that puts it in a nice neat line with all of these. Now you notice I mentioned that after 26 we have an interlude, then 27, then an interlude, and then 28. Yeep! That can get really confusing. So I just did 26. 26B, which makes it show up under 26, 27, 27B, and now it's time for us to do 28. I'm going to be taking Chapter 28 from the Star Child Compact, inserting my location information, and then pushing it out to this final in the appropriate format. Let's do that right now. So here's my working folder, and I'm going to come from here. In Audacity, I'm going to say Open, Here's my Star Child folder. Remember, under the Star Child trilogy, there's my Star Child folder. And I'm going to scroll down and pick Chapter 28 and say Open. Okay, lucky me, I happen to know that the first one, Iapetus Headquarters, is in Chapter 28 at the beginning. This is going to be easier to do. We just need to give it a few seconds for it to open up. All right, and now I'm going to zoom in on the beginning of this track. And I already know that's chapter 28. And then we go into the chapter. Well, right before that is where I'm going to need to insert Iapetus, Headquarters. And then we go in. When I worked with the rights holder, the author, on this project, we had a decision to make on the gaps for these. If you've done an audiobook with ACX, you know that if you leave a silent gap of more than three and a half seconds, the system might get confused and think that's the end of a chapter. So you want to have anything less than three and a half seconds if you can do that. 
And we figured that was a nice, neat amount of time, anything between two and a half to three seconds, where the listener isn't going to stop for a moment and go, did my, did my player stop? Did my book stop? Uh, I need to check it. No. Two or three seconds, they'll get it, especially once they do a few chapters in the book. So right about here, this is the two and a half second interval that you have between your chapter marker, chapter 28, and the beginning, right? So I'm going to go back to that header file I told you about. And what I'm expecting to see is Iapetus Headquarters. Let's check. Iapetus Headquarters. All right, that's what I want. And I want a little bit of a gap to the other side of it, so I cut this out. And now that means my file has moved on to the next one for when I go to my next one. And then I go back to chapter 28 and I paste it in. And now I just like it to be nicely balanced so it doesn't seem a little jarring. So the listener is going to get about a half a second of silence, the chapter name, two and a half seconds, 2.6, of silence, then the location. So this should probably be somewhere between two and a half or thereabouts. It's close enough. If I really felt like gold plating it, I could probably just copy paste a little bit of silence in there and make it just a smidge closer to 2.6. You don't have to be perfect with this. I'm just playing to show you an example. So let's see what happens now. I should be seeing chapter 28, Iapetus Headquarters. John was surprised at how quickly blah blah blah. Let's take a look. Chapter 28 Iapetus Headquarters John was surprised at how quickly... Awesome! That's gonna work just great. Great, that's my first one down pat. Let's take a moment and look at the next one. Okay, let's make a note real quick. It looks like this starts at four seconds. So I go in here and say, okay, this one's at four seconds. My next one, Earth, Mission Control. Where the heck is that in the manuscript? Earth, Mission Control. Okay, looks like it's on page 559. 559, that's two pages after this one. I've gotten a feel for that being about two or three minutes, typically. But notice something here. I copy-pasted all of this from the table of contents, and it says Earth, Mission Control. But what does the actual manuscript say when I get there? Earth, Mission Control, Houston. Oops. For some reason, sometimes, the automatic table of contents in a document might not make itself perfect. So if you have something in the manuscript, you want to keep an eyeball on that as you're doing your work and make sure you have it right. For me, once I realized that was a problem, I said, okay, Earth Mission Control in my original file. Earth Mission Control. Oh, that's not going to work. I need Mission Control I Houston. Okay, well, lucky for me, I said, all right, there's a mistake. Let me record that. Earth Mission Control Houston. Cool. All right. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to put that inside of Earth Mission Control. Well, where is Earth Mission Control? I know this is about where it's going to be, so I'm trying to look for this particular dialog, and that means I need to scoot just a few minutes ahead in the file and see if I can find it. Probably about the three-minute mark. That tends to be what two pages will do. So here we are. What am I hearing here? Are you saying that a form of Hebrew is the interlingua of our galaxy? He stopped pacing, placing his hands on his hips. Okay, where's that? He stopped pacing, placing his... Ooh, that's, that's a little way. So I've got a little bit more to go. I've got about another page. Maybe I go out to about five or six minutes. This is the part that's a little tedious. So right around here. That's a nice big gap. I bet that's exactly where it is. I've got to tell John about this. I've got to tell John about this. 
I've got to tell John about th Oh, good. So, Earth, Mission Control, Houston. Oh, dang, never I gotta go get my pickup. So, let's copy. And right in here, and go out to the edge, and paste. And now what I should hear is I should have a little gap here of about two to three seconds. That's close enough. As long as it's not 3.5 or more, I don't want to confuse anybody. And I don't want the listener to be going, did my player just stop? So I go over here and that's quite a bit more. I don't need that extra 0.2, so I'll just trim that a bit. There we go, close enough. So now what I should hear is I've got to tell John about this and then Earth Mission Control. Thanks, Elka. Listen. I've got to tell John about this. Earth. Mission Control. Houston. Rod Zakes had developed a routine that... Rod Zakes had developed a routine. Well, first, let's go ahead and say that's at 8.10. Awesome. That's where it is. Of course, now that I know there's a mistake... I can make a little note of it here by going, okay, the last time I had to fix Earth Mission Control and make sure it said Houston, let's just go ahead and fix that in the sheet. Because my rights holder might decide that they want to go through and make sure that everything sounds great. So now, I've got that fixed. I've made a note of the time that it goes to. And then I can move on to the next one pretty easily. Iapetus Headquarters. Okay, so that one is on page 560. That's not going to be quite so far ahead, and that'll be easy to find. Now remember my headers was Earth Mission Control. Eh, that was not right, so let's just delete that. So my next one should be Iapetus Headquarters. Cool, that's what I need. I need that in here, and I need it right about the point where I'm going to see I've got to call the White House. I have at his headquarters. John brought the entire team together. Okay, great. This works pretty good. So the last thing that I want to show you in this video is how I actually output these files since I have to make some changes. So if you actually look in my folder of the final stuff, you'll notice I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to keep all of these in a nice neat sequence when I fill in my metadata. I really don't know how important this is to you or ACX. The point is, it helps me keep it straight. So let's pretend I'm all done and I'm ready to output this. This is chapter 28 from the Star Child folder, but it needs to go into the final folder as the chapter 28 of volume 2. So I go export as mp3. Here's my final folder. I go down to where I've got my volume 2 stuff, and I know this is going to be chapter 28. And if I really want to keep stuff straight, I'll say it out loud to myself. I'll say, okay, this is chapter 28. And because it's chapter 28, it's going to be item number 68. Or I'm sorry, 69, because we have the interlude. Don't get fooled. So chapter 28 is going to be 69. Let's hit save. And then I'm going to load the template of metadata that I've already punched in here. Star Child Trilogy. And once I load that in, and I did notice that's a typo, compact, instead of second interlude, I say chapter 28, and I bump this up one more digit, and then I save my metadata back over the original file. And the reason I do this is if I get interrupted with all of this work, and I get lost, It'll be easy to know exactly where I left off, because the moment I go to load this, it's going to show me what chapter I was last in. And when I say OK, it's going to output that file, and it's going to create a chapter 28 file right here. Let's go ahead and do OK. And you can see the final will show up as chapter 28, and then I can hop over to ACX, and I can upload it. Hold on to your teeth. Let's scroll down. So I can go in here and say add chapter and type in star child chapter 28. Hit browse, upload the file, you're good to go. So I know that seems a little complicated, but I'll tell you something. 
being able to, one, have a file system in my mind for how I'm going to shuffle things from source to finished. Two, have a spreadsheet so I can track what the heck needs to go in and where and share that with my rights holder for if they want to review it. And three, pre-record all of the little pieces in a nice, neat little row where I just have to snip one out and drop it in one after the other. That has made doing this a lot faster. Each of these books is anywhere from 15 to 20 hours long, and so far, in about eight hours, I've managed to do almost all of the first two volumes, and when they're done, the third volume is already titled appropriately, and I just have to upload it. So, now you know. Here's a little bit of a workflow for you. I hope you find this helpful, but you're welcome to ask me any questions in the comments underneath this video. Alright, thanks for watching.